Good afternoon and welcome to the second in the series of Firefish Recruitment Crowdcasts, Change the Way You Recruit. Uh, today, we are looking at attack or retreat. How to react as a business owner uh, of a recruitment company during COVID-19. Uh, and I am delighted to be joined by the wonderful Louise Hannant, who is currently in sunny Cambridge. Um, Louise is a Firefish customer um, and runs her own PR and digital focused recruitment company based in London, has done for the last eight years previously and prior to that um, owned other companies. So in terms of being a business owner, got a lot of knowledge and advice that she can impart. Um, and uh, as I say, uh, Louise currently is uh, in sunny Cambridge, um, Premier Resourcing, her, her PR uh, and um, digital media focused recruitment company is in London. Um, we've all got sunny backdrops at the moment. We're, a lot of us are working at home, <laughs> all of us. Um, but of course, there is a, um, you know, a, a changing world out there. Um, there's a lot going on from uh, the uh, business perspective. Um, and in the news over the last few days, the economy is getting centre stage uh, in terms of people wondering what's happening next. Um, so we've got a, a few of these questions that we're going to put to Louise today um, and uh, have in discussion uh, on the subject of, as I say, attack or retreat, how to react as a recruitment business owner during COVID-19. So welcome to you, Louise. Um, I hope you're well Thank today. You, Matt. Yeah, um, very well indeed. The sun is shining. All good. <laughs> it, it is. It is indeed. Um, so really, the first thing I want to sort of get to the point of is, you know, the current climate, obviously, with COVID-19, ma massive, massive challenges. Um, as a business owner, is this the biggest challenge you would say that you have faced business-wise? Um, I don't think it's the biggest. Yeah, I think I think the jury's out on that one, quite frankly, Matt, just at the moment. I definitely think it's the most surreal thing that's happened to me. And I think most of our recruitment owners will probably concur with that. And it's definitely an acute business challenge. I mean, basically, you know, since the middle of um, March, we found in a period of about three or four days that about 80 percent of our jobs were like wiped off the board. Um, and I think, you know, along with other biz, um, recruitment agency owners, it's been a, it was a really tough week because there were so many things that were coming to light and having to basically hold your nerve and sort of steady, steady your team and just make sure um, that you had all the facts and were trying to you know, deal with it and process that information as it sort of uh, was rolled out. Um, and I think ultimately, you know, I'm, I've done recruitment now for two decades and I've seen you know, two recessional sort of marketplaces, the, you know, the dot-com bubble in 2001, 2002, and then obviously the big one, the financial crisis. Um, you know, I, whilst this is a really big deal, what we're going through right now, I'm holding on to the fact that hopefully this will be short-lived and, uh, you know, pretty short-lived in comparison to some of the long lingering sort of impacts that, you know, recessional marketplaces have, which can last for years, quite frankly. So, yeah, that's what we're holding on to right now. Okay, fine. So a bit of optimism in terms of what it's going to be like yeah. on the other side, in terms of how long it's going to be going on for. Um, one thing yeah. I sort of track back to in what you were saying just a second ago, 80% you know, of the jobs that you were working on, um, you know, slashed, cut, pulled from under your, your feet, Absolutely, and, yeah. so to speak. Um, you know, it must have been then, or if, if not then, you know, when was it that you, you thought, hang on, you know, this is this is different. We got some some big decisions to make. And indeed, you know, what have been some of those big decisions as a, as a business owner? Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's been quite a few and in quick, quick succession, basically. Um, so, you know, I'm not one for sort of sticking my head in the sand and, and sort of hoping that things, you know, um, go away. It's all about, you know, you know, being in control and making decisive decisions ultimately and, and keeping a cool head. And, and the first the, the first sort of things I did were much more on a defensive basis, I would say. Um, so ultimately, the first thing I did was just look at, so worst case scenario, what would happen if we had no income coming in for the next three months and did some sort of financial modeling and looked at the forecast to see where we stood financially uh, and to work out what the sort of best and worst case scenarios here. 
Um, and then ultimately, you know, we, we are in a fairly good place. We we knew that, um, you know, we had some cash reserves. We weren't sort of, you know, in outright panic at any point. Um, so um, once we'd actually done that, um, I, my, my key concern really was to make sure that my, my team were reassured because ultimately they're all panicking to a certain degree about whether my job is going to be safe because literally over the space of three or four days, it was announced um, you know, that lots of, you know, we found that the, the PR marketplace itself, a lot of the actual agencies and our clients were cutting um, a lot of jobs and making redundancies um, before it even really sort of hit us as a business. So I took the time to look at the financials of the business and reassured my team that for the next three months, at least we would be, have, they would have their salaries fully paid um, and also they would receive their commission on a staggered basis as well. And so knowing that we then, sort of then made a decision really um, to then look at you know how much of an impact it was making on on the business and then working out how we were going to ring fence those clients that were still considering to um, you know you know looking to move forward and at least do some of the interview process so um, you know we could move forward as a business as well. Um, so yeah that's pretty much what we did sort of defensively. Um, and then other things that we did on a defensive level was just um, you know be smart financially and looking to um, defer payments to HMRC sort of on like corporation tax front and and also um, on the VAT front as well. So we're giving a bit of a, a holiday on that too. Um, and then on a personal level, because I take sort of dividends from the business, obviously it's within my interest to keep as much cash in the business as, 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 uh, for as long as possible right now and, and not to be reliant on people paying me either because we're all business owners in the same boat and I was expecting people to sort of stop paying us uh, to a certain degree so for me I, I took a hit as well and made sure that I sort of deferred my own personal mortgage payments and various other things that I could postpone so I could keep um, the money in the business so to speak so yeah that's that's pretty much what we did. Okay excellent and, and in terms of you know taking support um, from the government and in terms of the, uh, the initiatives that they put out there um, you know you mentioned about sort of tapping into them. How how has that process been for you as a business owner? Because I know <laughs> the tip of many people's tongues at the moment is, you know, can you get hold of the loans? You know, can... yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm probably in the vast majority of companies where, yeah, absolutely, we've we've decided that we we're going to need a loan uh, for the longer term impact on cash flow. I think if this does, you know, go beyond three months to six months, we need a loan in place. I know uh, if it's twelve months interest free. You know why the hell wouldn't you take it right now? It's a lifeline, and along with the sort of staff retention uh, scheme where you can furlough some of your staff. And having reviewed some of our situation, we've decided that we, you know, we have furloughed some fifty percent of my staff, but keeping the other half on board. Um, but I've spent so many hours on the phone trying to get through to my main lender, um, being on hold for um, I think it was on hold about two or three hours at a time, uh, and then got cut off. At the same point, I think it was like 67 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to say who the lender is, but they did the same thing twice in a row. Uh, and it's really frustrating because obviously what we're trying to do is to get through. And, you know, and to be fair, I can't really blame the banks too much at this point in time because they're just trying to get their ducks in a row and, and try and get the cash out. But I'm still pending whether or not I'm going to be getting um, a business loan. So I, I'm going to keep my fingers and toes crossed on that one as well. So, uh, but I really do feel sorry for a lot of other recruiters out there that don't have that cash flow out there, you know, happening right now. So, you know, God knows what, what they're doing to, to try and, you know, keep that money in the business and, and to keep their team motivated um, and, you know, just keep the whole thing, you know, the wheels um, on the bus, so to speak. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, and, in, and in terms of the, you know, the position that you've got your company into and obviously yeah. the financial stability that you've had previously and sort of yeah. before coming into this crisis, obviously that's, stood you in good stead um Absolutely. And, and but yes that is a massive point that you you raised louise in terms of you know you know other companies and um you know the dynamic that they may have the scenarios and situations that and you know they may not have been obviously um in existence for as long as you guys have hmm. um so really i suppose on on that i mean is there you know any advice you can you, you can give um that you would uh, that you would extend would you say from um, you know, your learnings so far. Um, and, and, and also really to that, um, you know, that how long can we go for, you know? 
I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't think uh, realistically the government is going to be able to keep us in lockdown for a sustained period of time because it, it just isn't viable from a social point of view, um, let alone from an economic point of view as well. I mean, I'm I'm confident um, that they're going to have to 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 raise some of these the lockdown hopefully by mid to late late May, maybe even look to get the kids back to school so that some of the key decision um, key decision makers in businesses, for example, can get on with really addressing, um, you know, they're dealing with their business properly. Because I think, you know, when you've got looking at doing childcare with kids and trying to run a business, it's just the two things just don't combine that well when we're all sort of working from home right now. So I think I think, I think, think if we do that, we'll relieve some of the pressure and then people can start thinking a bit more commercially. And I, I'm looking forward to the government putting into place, um, you know, a bit of a, you know, a step-by-step -step plan on how that's going to, to work so that we can all get a bit of relief from the situation, I think, as well. I mean, I think they're estimating at the moment, I saw on Sky News last night, that they, it's going to cost uh, the, the company, the, the, sorry, the economy between 30 and 40 billion pounds a month right now um, to keep it in lockdown. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a really tough decision for them to make, particularly, you know, in the public eye right now about what they're going to do. So it's not an easy one. Absolutely. And I think you were saying earlier as well, it sort of comes down to obviously a moral one as well between business and the economy versus, Absolutely, uh, yeah. versus health. Um, so I just for a second as well, want to sort of get into maybe some of the, uh, you know, detail that, we, you know, could help other recruitment companies out there at the moment. Um, and that's basically from, say, the three C's, if you like, your, your, your clients, um, your, uh, your candidates and your colleagues. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of managing those relationships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what have you noticed, really? I mean, obviously, things have changed over the last few weeks, but is there, an, an, you know, clients, for example, um, you know, how has your, uh, your communication contact relationships been with them over the last couple it, of it, it's, it's been quite, it's been really weird, actually, because I've had some really quite poignant and lovely conversations with clients that are normally quite difficult to get hold of. The things, because everyone's working from home, a lot of the time their businesses have been is sort of faltering or, you know, they're not doing as much work and then sort of in sort of suspended animation almost themselves. So, um, yeah, so I've actually had been able to get through to a few people and really have a certain level of empathy and sort of, you know, reinforce my support for them and in, in their business and sort of sharing almost stories about, you know, how, how we're coping and how we're doing and what we should do. So I always think, um, you know, it's, it's actually been a great time to, to build relationships with with the clients right now as well. Uh, and hopefully they'll, they'll remember us and, and, that, and, the, and the, the sort of ironic bit of a laugh we had um, about trying to deal with it in a sort of perverse way um, and how we're going to get through it and, and come back to us in the future, really. And I think just try and be compassionate. You know, we know that clients, I, I'm not putting too much emphasis on trying trying to get the cash out um, clients at the moment who are clearly also trying to work out how they're going to keep cash in their business. So I think there needs to be a certain level of compromise going on. Uh, and then when, when the play is resumed again, hopefully soon, we can we'll work together and move forward. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what a lot of people are hoping for. And certainly some comments coming in here just from Anthony McCormack saying thanks for the advice and fingers, fingers crossed, etc. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's looking for advice at the moment. Everybody's looking mm -hmm. to, to see, you know, how other businesses are operating and, uh, yeah. and what is uh, and what is taking place. You mentioned about cash earlier, cash in the business. Yeah. Um, cash is king, cash is queen, cash is everything at the moment. Um, yeah, it is. And um, obviously, you know, if, if you're in a position business-wise to, to be able to retain some of that cash within the, the business, great. Um, otherwise, going forward, you know, companies need to adapt, uh, adopt, sorry, uh, different strategies. Um, the title of uh, this crowdcast today is um, uh, essentially, you know, whether to uh, uh, attack or, uh, or retreat. And, um, you know, there's some offensive and defensive uh, uh, measures that can uh, take place. You've uh, spoken mm -hmm. about, you know, some of the measures obviously you've taken in terms of government support. Um, Louise, I know that you're taking a very proactive and positive approach to, to what's going on. And, you know, yeah. it's in your DNA, as you've said to me before, um, you know, you're the business owner and you, you, you find a way through. Um, mm -hmm. you know, are there any examples at the moment um, where, you know, you, you're moving forward. You're, you, yeah. you, you said that you're, you're, you're attacking, so to speak. I mean, I know, obviously, you're a Firefish customer. You've, you've brought forward your, 
um, implementation in, res in respect to that. But, you know, yeah. generally speaking, you know, are there any other sort of opportunities where you found, right, yeah, we can, we can seize upon this? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think it'd be crazy right now to go out there and try and win a load of new business. That's for sure. So, uh, you know, that that that's really not not what we're looking at here. Here, but I think definitely behind the scenes, there are definitely things to be done. I found it quite um, perversely quite a good thing that I've had the headspace over the last couple of weeks to really sit back without having to be wear my recruitment hat or managing people just to look at you know you know how can I future proof my business what else could I be doing in this time to make us um, a better uh, a better version of ourselves almost when we come out the other side so um, a couple of things that we're doing at the moment is obviously we're onboarding Firefish which which is great as a, as a database um, and sort of take us forward and be a lot more sort of candidate centric um, uh, um, uh, as an application really and I think that we, we were definitely lacking that and, and as a company we're very we like to think we're quite innovative and progressive and so that's one really big area that as a team I'm you know myself and a couple of my more senior members of staff are going through and looking at how we can implement that um, and we're doing you know some quite arbitrary stuff like cleaning the database up is actually quite therapeutic once you get into it um, you know everyone's sort of taken a proportion of a database clearing it up making sure that we've got um, lots of good clean records uh, reaching out to candidates making sure that all the candidates are there um, uh, the, and who, who are actively looking right now. So when so when the restrictions are lifted, we can we can work positively with them to find them a job. Um, and we are still doing recruitment, but just the other half of the the recruitment sort of um, process. You know, much more of it is about registering candidates. There's some really amazing candidates out there right now who are really committed, have great CVs, and have just fallen foul of this situation um, right now. So we're registering them giving them some level of reassurance that things will move forward. And ultimately, when we're reaching out to clients as well, we're encouraging them to try and um, actually, rather than just put the whole recruitment process on ice, encouraging them to actually do some of the process, get that banked on, on their side, do you know, 50, 75% remotely, and then finish off potentially with a face-to-face -face meeting when, when restrictions are lifted, particularly if it's a critical hire and they haven't technically lost any business. So they're, they're, you know, we're holding on to, to those clients right now and explaining that situation quite clearly to candidates that that's what's happening. And then you know, moving forward and having that all sort of banked up to a certain degree so both parties will benefit and ultimately, you know, we, we get to benefit from that as well. Um, and then also as well, um, we, we're doing, uh, I'm ironically, you know, I've got space in my business and hope that we were going to hire a couple of people uh, moving forward. Um, we were going to be doing that in June and July. So I'm currently mapping out the market to, to approach a few people that are actually, um, you know, either alternative recruiters or people um, with a PR background that would fit us that could, again, um, you know, benefit from um, being on, coming on board with us and joining us from a recruitment perspective um, in, in, you know, in sort of July, July, probably more realistically now, I would say. But there's some great people out there that just need to, you know, to, to be given a bit of a lifeline. And it's a great opportunity to, to seize on that if you've got the nerve and the cash to, to, to think about that and have, and have self-belief that that, you know, will come out the other end almost. And, and, and Louise, that's really interesting because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they may not. They may have been opportunities that weren't there, other, you know, in a normal run of play. But you know, the mm. the crisis that has hit us basically has sort of thrown everything um, up in the air. Um, mm. And as you say, you know, there's there's an opportunity there. But to seize on that opportunity, you know, the phrase you used at the end of that sentence was self belief. Absolutely. So whether it's you know the self belief in you know re, uh, restructuring your company so that it can survive. Um, or um, basically, you know, continuing putting processes and systems in place because you've mm -hmm. got the belief it's going to come mm -hmm. out the other side or, you know, to actually go ahead and perhaps be recruiting as well is, um, you know, is, is massive, I would say. Now, a couple of questions are coming in from, no, the, I saw that, yeah. from, from the audience here. Um, and I'll go to uh, John's, uh, John's question first, and that's basically yep. um, around up upskilling your team and your staff. You know, we mentioned yep. about... We are. The, you know, colleagues and candidates, etc. Um, I've, got, I've got another question that this also come through as well about about your staff, which uh, I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. But let's take this one no, first. Absolutely. It, this is yeah. about upskilling your team, and you know anything that's you know in place at the moment around that. 
Uh, yeah, uh, ironically, yes. So, so my deputy uh, Sam at the moment is um, sort of galvanising the team to do um, some on some online training modules. So we use Recruitment Juice uh, as a platform, um, which basically covers all the sort of you know, the recruitment process as a three hundred and sixty um, approach. Uh, and basically, we're looking at modules on social media um, at the moment, how to engage. Um, with candidates, um, particularly that might need our help. And secondly, actually, there's a, um, a brand new module that's come out about how to deal with the coronavirus as a recruiter. So I have yet to actually watch this, but I know some of, some of my team are actually looking at that right now as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what you know what other people's take is on that and how they can we can apply that from a training point of view but yeah absolutely um my team are fully on board and motivated we had a really clear-cut plan over the last two or three weeks you know despite everyone working from home that was one of our biggest challenges is making sure right at the beginning of the process everyone had the capability to work from home and then each week um you know we've been really supportive with each other online got a really clear structure about what we're trying to trying to achieve keeping it simple keeping that line of communication open and you know everyone has been really fantastic as a team and uh, it just um, you know i'm just really really proud of them about what they've been doing uh, you know because ultimately if you look after your team now they're going to look after you when we come out the other side as well it's you know it's a two-way street um you know that respect is there hopefully on both sides anyway so um but yeah okay Excellent. And you mentioned about engagement with candidates as part of that, that process and the yep. training that's taking place at the moment, at the moment within that. Yep. Were there any major, major, major differences, um, you know, that would stand it apart from sort of engaging with candidates now in this current crisis versus, you know, traditionally or, you know, I, I think traditionally happened? in our market. Yeah, I, I think I think I think historically um, our marketplace, um, you know, our, the, the PR candidate base is pretty discerning. They're all real, real sort of wordsmiths in their own right. And um, and ultimately, um, we're not always their first the first people to get that, that, that they come to. We're sort of a bit of a reluctant sort of um, um, supplier to use, I think, almost in a way. So, so we always have we're always faced with um, ghosting quite a lot and just trying to work out which candidates are actually committed and what we have seen is that there's some there's, you know a real I've had some again some really lovely conversations with candidates and helping to to, to to steer them through where they've got no cash as a freelancer for example right now and just trying to give them some advice on their CV and, and reassure them that we will come out the other side and and just listen to them basically uh, and uh, whilst we're registering them at the same time so that when when things are lifted we, we can move forward but yeah it, it's been it's been really good to try and actually have really nice conversations with people where they have the time working from home as well or or or, or then they're, they're not doing anything right now and just want to speak to somebody um to feel that they're in control and can move forward with their career in a few weeks time so that's changed the dynamic of the conversations that you're yeah having. absolutely well, it, they're much more forthcoming um much more open um and I'm really committed to, to wanting to, to, to find a good role. And, and when you have, um, you know, a bank of candidates that want to do that, I'm just really looking forward to when the floodgates open and, and clients start buying again, because we can put those two, two variables together again, hopefully. The floodgates open when they open. I'm going to come back to that. I hope there'll be a flood. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Uh, but I, you know, while we're talking about uh, candidate staff, et cetera, there was another question that had come in from, uh, from Liz Jay. Um, and that okay. was um, essentially around furlough. And um, she yeah. was interested to know, how did your team take uh, being furloughed? Um, um, I, I, you know, we, as soon as that initiative was released, I realised that uh, as a lifeline, to, particularly to recruiters right now, it was something that I was going to have to present. So I actually mentioned this um, before the lockdown actually happened. To, and I already sort of ring fence um, two or three like key people that were going to be obvious contenders for that. Either they work in a support um, fashion or they're much, much more junior in terms of um, uh, their level of recruitment experience. So I'd already actually um, had initial conversations um, just to sound out how they would feel about it and made sure I was fully aware of the facts um, once they had been rolled out so I can um, let them know I, I, and we we outsource um, our HR um, our HR function to citation as well and they were really good at providing quite useful templates on um, how to put together um, you know a, a, a letter for furloughing members of staff and, and how to handhold them through that process as well um, so yeah it's um, again it's a real learning for me uh, as having not done that before and I found that my staff are actually really quite supportive because I've really you know I'm topping up their, their salaries 
um, for that extra 20%, because I, like I said, I value them and it is just a moment in time that we're all having to face together and reassure them that I want them all back on board um, when we're coming out the other side. So I didn't really have uh, much of a concern um, from or many issues um, from them from their side. So I've been I've been really um, uh, happy about that and really grateful in their response as well. And um, you said there, there were learnings there and things that, you know, we hadn't come across before. I mean, a lot of us hadn't even come across the word furlough before. No, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we had had to look it up. Um, but again, as, you know, <laughs> uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, as a, as a, as a business owner um, and, you know, those, you know, elements coming into coming into place, such dr- dramatic changes uh, to your business. Um, yeah. Louise, how did it make you feel at the time? You know, you own this business. You've been running. Oh my! Oh my God! Yeah, oh my God! It's like an emotional roller coaster. So you know, I, I on the inside, I was you know probably flapping quite a lot. You know, sort of thinking, how the hell am I going to get myself out of this? Um, but but on the outside, I was trying to keep my cool. So you know that let that panic internally doesn't sort of cascade down to your team. Because ultimately, you know, as a business owner, you've got to you've got to man up. Your whole point, reason why you why you build a business in the first place is to deal with the situation like this in the first place, and to know in yourself that ultimately you have those qualities to lead and to lead by example as well. And 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 yeah, so for a week it felt it was like hell. I would say I think from like the probably the sixteenth of March through to lockdown, when we had to get so many different things in place. Like working from home and, and then making all those defensive financial decisions and making sure the realization that cash, you know what's happening with cash flow and this and that and, and you know it's just a lot of things to process so so yeah i feel a lot more settled now i like being in control and just know the facts and so now the dust has settled it's it feels a lot more manageable so that now we can turn to go from more of a defensive sort of retreat scenario to a bit more of an attack and feel that yeah you know it's, we're going to come out the other side Absolutely. And and you mentioned a couple of times, you know, when the floodgates are open, um, when, when we hit the other side, <laughs> um, you know, what uh, it looks pretty sunny from exactly where you're sitting at the moment. But, you know, yeah. of, you know, what's what, what's next for Premier Resourcing? You know, what, what do you um, what do you see as your 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 plan, your action plan going forward? And, you know, do you have any thoughts on, you know, when when will that other side be and what and what will it look like? Uh, that's quite a big question, to be honest. It's a bit like on how long is a piece of string. As I said, I am I'm still pretty confident that um, by end, the end of May, restrictions will be lifted and we'll have a trickle effect of people being able to work. Um, and we'll see we'll start seeing jobs coming back on board probably mid to late May for those people that are um, have a bit more of a risk appetite and have also a need for their jobs. You know, this was a boom market beforehand. You know, we had our very best quarter in the first quarter of the year. So I'm confident that, you know, people want to get back to work. You know, this is a, like an, an artificial recession that's been placed upon us and nobody Nobody really wants that. So I'm, I'm really confident that people will come back and and want to want to attack it a, a bit more. Um, and, and then, um, you know, as I said, we're still in an OK position with cash reserves. So I'm going, we're going to, you know, uh, just uh, keep, keep going and, and, and just ring fence those clients and, and deliver on those jobs to make those placements when they do start to happen. And, you know, it's, it's a simple simple plan of attack on, on that front, really. And then if we need to, you know, hopefully, you know, I won't need to fell um, the rest of my team until till the end of May, but we have that as a fallback if, if we need to right now. Uh, and then, as I said, uh, you know, things are going to get, be- get better from that point onwards. Interesting, absolutely. And, you know, um, and we're all waiting with bated breath to, to see how it takes. You know, the mindset you've got and, the, you know, the, the positive element there, uh, you know, it is obviously something which is, which is great, Louise, and I'm, I'm going to come back to that as well. But something specific that uh, Ben has just asked, actually, um, is with regards to new or different marketing strategies. Um, and are you employing uh, any new or different marketing strategies to promote your business to clients? Um in in terms, I think overall as a business, because we're still we're still growing as a business, we're looking at, at how we promote our business full stop and and increase increase visibility. Um, I think um, you know our marketplace. Um, they they are PR and communication specialists, so they know how how to position 
um, to other businesses about how to manage uh, the coronavirus and, and what communications piece needs to be put into play. And we're just going to just be there to support them um, from a recruitment perspective and just make sure, um, you know, so we're, we're raising our game and have a bit more of a cohesive uh, marketing strategy, I think, moving forward, which is not something that we've had a chance to really focus on. It's been not been you know, we've been building a team right now for this year and next year is more about finessing uh, and, and, and looking at creating a bit more of a cohesive marketing, marketing plan and, and looking forward to doing more, more of these uh, sessions, hopefully, as well in the future to, to improve our marketing as well. Absolutely. Well, you know, value and advice from, you know, businesses um, going through it is, uh, is obviously something that is, uh, is sought after out there. Um, some interesting thoughts as well, just from, from Francis, just, um, and I'm guessing what Francis is um, uh, indicating out here is, you know, you know, the state of the economy after lockdown and what it's going to be like. Um, mm. And again, you know, in the news at the moment, obviously the, the economy and how bad it potentially could get is, uh, you yeah. know, constantly bandied around and um, a lot of doom and gloom in the media. Yeah, but, um, yeah I know, I know. I think ultimately, you know, the media are there, aren't they, though, to sensationalise and amplify the problem. That's their job to a certain degree. That's what they're good at. So um, and, and at the moment, we are very much still in a problem scenario. and We're not really there. We're starting to think about solutions, but we're not we're not really there yet from a society point of view. And I think, of course, the idea of a full recession is plausible, but I don't think realistically it will be because like I said and I go back to this point this is a this is an enforced situation it, during a, a technically a boom market so I agree I think some people might have had um, uh, might, might, their confidence might be knocked as business owners but I think most clients sort of want to get back it on on the horse and basically want to to, to start thinking about um, you know making investments in their business and, and and there will be holes to fill where they may have um, had people been made redundant or you know there are always opportunities to be had and you know even if there is a full recession or even if it drags on for another sort of three to six months it's still a relatively short period of time and with the support from the government in place I, I think um, you know, it's better to think optimistically and positively here yeah, than um, sort of dwell on, you know, worst case scenario. I don't think that's going to help anybody right now. And, and, and Louise, I think that's, that's fantastic and, you know, um, really interesting, you know, positive, proactive feedback without being, you know, deluded and, you know, the importance, yeah. of, you know, attacking at the right time and the opportunity. Exactly. Um, but, you know, knowing when to retreat and, you know, uh, save your um, areas of your business at the same time. Exactly. Um, you mentioned something earlier about risk appetite. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think the businesses that are going to survive or the ones that are going to recover most quickly when we do get to the other side are going to be those that have a risk appetite that are able to Absolutely. It's always a sign, you know, in the last two actual proper recessions, it's always the companies that have the, 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 the sort of have the nerve um, and startups, ironically, um, are some of the best companies that have been set up in a recession or marketplace because they see it as an opportunity rather than um, a time to to go with the masses and sort of dwell on the problem. You know, and, and, and that's and that's what the whole sort of entrepreneurial spirit is about. You know, you're either that in that camp or you're in the other camp. And I like to think that I'm in that entrepreneurial camp. And now, and even though there may be fewer clients out there with that mindset right now, I know that there'll be a lot of SMEs that will be looking to attack that marketplace because they don't have anything to lose, um, rather than some of the big uh, groups that we work with. And, and those are the companies that we'll be focusing on, quite frankly. So, so aligning your sites effectively um, yeah. with, uh, with, with your risk appetite in mind, um, and a kind exactly. of again, Again, in from from Lynn Rose, um, you know, endorsing that completely. Agree, Louise. Keeping keeping positive um, is yeah. is that is absolutely key. Um, and you yeah. mentioned about two thousand and eight. You you know you were a business owner at that time as well. And you, uh, yeah, yeah, you've got experience from that. You know, when we kicked off this crowdcast um, over half an hour ago or so. You know, one of the first things I think you mentioned was you know when I asked you, is this the worst? you know, most challenging situation business-wise you've been in, you know, um, you said no. 
you know, it, you know. Well, no, well, no, it's not. It's not because when I, when I, you know, we've been given lifelines in terms of government funding here, and it's a short period of time where we can see that there's good, there's potentially we're going to come out the other side. During the financial crisis, you know, it was deep. And hard, and, and we, we we were due that that recession because you know we had the full banking collapse of the you know the, the thing that underpinned our, our you know most businesses quite frankly. So of course that would be it's a much more chronic and crippling scenario to be in. But even during that period of time, you know the clients that I had um, before before the actual um, recession hit, when because I ended up setting up a, a brand new business actually having sort of departed. Um, being in a partnership with somebody else. And actually, I found that um, the, the, the clients that I actually got revenue from, about 70% of my desk was brand new clients who had an appetite for risk, who were setting up as previous business, uh, business owners that wanted um, to, to, to do something different. And I think from adversity is always... Uh, Positivity does come and opportunity does knock. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't phase me, um, you know, this situation. I think, you know, there are some advantages of being in recruitment a long time and, and seeing a few things. Um, so, yeah, it's um, yeah, it just, I think it's key that we all move forward on it. Fantastic. Um, and that's some great advice to, to round up on. And really, you know, what I want to do is just sort of um, finish by sort of resonating, you know, what you said earlier about your appetite for risk, positivity. Um, and, you know, and going forward um, in, a, in a proactive manner, being, being what's needed now. It's well-founded arguments from a business owner, um, you know, that's seen various different uh, recessions before, as I was saying, 2008. So, um, Louise, I'll hand over to you just to give one last piece of sort of advice or nugget, or at least tell us where does your appetite for risk come from? You know, where does it come from? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I think I've, I've always, I, I've been, I think I'm quite lucky. I've always been... Uh, a, um, I always wanted to fight the fear, move forward, um, uh, be conf confrontational in terms of life. I mean, you're only here once, right? So, you know, I think I'm, I'm quite blessed with good DNA in, in that respect. And uh, yeah, I've never, never looked back and procrastinated. I think things like negativity and apathy right now would kill, kills off businesses and also undermines your team. And I think, um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, maybe I'm just blessed with the, my attitude and my hunger and appetite for it, even after this sort of period of time. But I, but I love it. And, uh, you know, yeah, I think, as I said, if you underpin everything with a positive mindset and you're smart and strategic alongside that, then, then, then you'll come good. Well, Louise, fantastic words of advice, which I'm sure you audience <laughs> today has uh, very much enjoyed and uh, thank you. been pleased uh, listening to. So, uh, so thank you uh, for that. Thank you for taking us through, you know, some, you know, in detail, information about you know your business currently thank as well. you so okay. it's, uh, it's, it's been really appreciated um okay. and, thank you. And, uh, and have a good day and to the yeah, audience and you too yeah absolutely <laughs> thanks matt you take care take care and thank you to the audience for listening and yeah, tune in again you. in two weeks time when we'll have hannah keep regarding remote training um and uh you know another great subject um considering the uh, the challenges that we're facing at the moment um thank you for listening take care for now <laughs>